March 28, 2023, 27 brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated chartered their first Toastmasters Club exclusively for members of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. This conversation is the benefits of Toastmasters for brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha. Please join me and a few of my brothers as we discuss why Toastmasters is a beneficial group for not only members of Alpha, but for anyone wanting to be a better leader and public speaker. Enjoy. Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Philip Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, 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 Facebook, LinkedIn, everybody out there. Uh, we are going live with a special broadcast podcast about Alpha Toastmasters. So we have a lot of guests here uh, joining us for this special occasion. I'm waiting for my co-host to join in, uh, Brother Graham. Hey, he's gonna be, there we go. He's going to be joining us. We're going live. And so we just we were thinking about how we have just recently launched a new Toastmasters club for exclusively for members of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, we started this club in March, uh, March 28th, I believe, of this year. And so we just hit the six month mark. We're going strong. Uh, we have a lot of great brothers. And so we thought we would have kind of like a fireside chat, live podcast to share the benefits of Toastmasters for brothers, particularly uh, brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna remove this thing. Got brother brother Graham. Why don't you introduce yourself as my co-host for this fireside chat, and then we'll introduce the good brothers that are gonna be joining us right there. Uh, brother Peralta, they can't see the brick because you're not on stage yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, good evening, everyone. My name is Norman Graham. I'm a full 2011 initiate of um, the Beta Sigma Lambda chapter, which is in Hartford, Connecticut, currently in New Jersey now. Uh, so November makes 12 years that I've been a member of the organization and Toastmasters is one of our new ventures, I would say, um, as an organization for Toastmasters in general and as Brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha. Excellent, excellent. So we're going to go ahead and just start bringing our guests on. Some of our guests have to leave early or depart early, but we're going to bring on a lot of uh, brothers from all over the country that have joined. I think, I believe every brother here that has joined this conversation with us tonight is a charter member of our club. And so they were there from day one of this new chartering. So without further ado, uh, we're going to bring on uh, our, you know, good brother right here, brother Ramon Peralta. There you go. Now we can see now we can see the, the break. <laughs> can you introduce yourself? Uh, brothers, this break right here is 34 years old. Just so you guys know. So we need to add what, like 15 years to that? That's how old you were when you crossed? So add 17. I, I know. I was just I was like about to say, man. Well, like, more, you than young. Life, more than half my life. But brothers, I had time. Okay, I, 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 if you did the math, this is my bedtime, and you guys have me up here uh, late night talking about this esteemed group, um, and I'm finding the energy for it because it is, as a paid speaker, which is now uh, how my career has evolved, um, I find Toastmasters to, to be a valuable resource to improve my speaking ability, get live feedback, um, and also witness other great speakers that are in our brotherhood uh, whom I can uh, glean uh, tactics, skills, um, techniques of, of speaking and, and hear them, even the great speakers uh, amongst us get criticized and, and we get real time feedback from brothers. So it, to me, it's, it's iron sharpening iron from an oratorical perspective. Yeah, that's great. You know, and I think, you know, we're going to probably flip it up. I think that, you know, I was thinking in my mind, we have all the brothers come on, but maybe we will highlight each of our brothers briefly. You will ask you one or two questions each, and then everyone gets a chance to share their story 
and then they can leave and go back to bed and respect everyone's time. We might not even be a whole hour, but we know maybe me and Norman will chop it up for the end of it. Um, but so, Brother Peralta, um, you have been involved in many, many initiatives within Alpha. Uh, you know, you're on the National Publications Committee. You're doing all these things. What what drew you to add this to your Alpha journey? I mean, you've done so much that you could have easily just said this is another thing. But yeah. what made you want to be involved with Alpha Toastmasters? I think Toastmasters has always fascinated me uh, as something to, to be a part of. But I, I haven't had the warm fuzziness of wanting to be around that particular group of people like I did when Alpha decided to start it. So I, I commend you for starting this group. But being criticized among strangers probably has its advantages, and no doubt. But having an Alpha group of Toastmasters just really um, made it a no-brainer for me because it is a group that I've been interested in, that I've, that I've known about. Um, but haven't maybe I haven't been invited by someone or haven't really uh, taken the extra step of going to seek out a local Toastmasters chapter, but, but just having brothers um, involved in organizing it and having the, the, uh, the opportunity to be one of the charter of founding members of it uh, was something that appealed to me. Yeah, okay. and, yeah Brother Grant, go ahead. I like that. I like that. I would say since the chartering of Alpha Toastmasters till now, how it impacted your life professionally, personally? Well, I, I think that uh, it, it's helped me expand my network, you know, because brothers are, are joining Toastmasters from all across the country. Um, you know, we had a brother uh, from uh, Texas join us last night. Um, it's also, um, I've also done some training. So part of being a member of Toastmasters, even if it's the Alpha Toastmasters group, we're still affiliated with the National Toastmasters. And, I, and it was really uh, eye-opening to me when we had our first meeting and we had officers from Toastmasters that were non-alphas in our meeting, helping us learn how to run a Toastmasters meeting. There's a very particular way to run it. It's unlike any other format that I've ever been uh, exposed to. It's not Robert's Rules of Order. It's very organized. We have brothers that are timekeepers. We have um counters. Um, we have uh, brothers that are designated evaluators. So it's very well run. It's a very efficient format. I get a lot out of it. Uh, and so it's. I believe it's already improved my speaking ability. I did a paid pe uh, speaking uh, gig this morning. And, and, it, and it's given me an extra bit of confidence to think on my feet uh, when we have table topics. It's, it's expanded my vocabulary. You know, we have word of the day at every meeting. So all of these things are really, uh, you know, beneficial to anyone that wants to improve their speaking skills, whether you're an educator or a paid speaker, um, a, a, a radio personality, uh, a professor, uh, you name it. We're all going to have opportunities where we have to deliver a workshop or something. And, uh, and Toastmasters to me is an invaluable resource for the brothers. And, and uh, it's another layer to the fraternal bond. Well, you know, I know it's, I know it's past your bedtime. So I, I will say this parting question, and I would love for you to share anything that you're doing. You know, always, if you've been, a, you, you've been on my podcast, shout out some plugs. So things that you're working on. But my last thing is, you know, last question. Um, Charcoal or propane? I'm team charcoal, man. I'm team what? Charcoal. <laughs> I'm, team charcoal. I'm not going to go on public record and not say I'm team charcoal. <laughs> team charcoal, man. You know this. Oh man. Okay. Well, that, that caught me off guard. I was, I was, I was so surprised. Propane. I wasn't surprised at all. Actually, I knew, I knew you were going to say this. Well, propane, gang, that's an outdoor stove, man. You know this. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm so okay. Well, I've been flabbergasted by this last answer. Uh, Brother Peralta, as you head out, um, any parting words, anything you'd like to share for those on the fence, particularly our brothers at Alpha, why they should join Toastmasters and anything that they could do to connect with you? Yeah, brothers, uh, join Toastmasters. It's a great organization. It's and, and you have an opportunity to be part of the Alpha Toastmasters. So Alphas are already excellence personified. Now you can be part of a group that's 
going to improve your speaking skills. Uh, you'll be affiliated with nationals and the memberships are sold in six months increments. So definitely give it a try and you can always renew. You can always bail if you feel it's too much of a time commitment, but you get to be exposed to brothers from all across the country. There's no limit to the size of the group. And we'd love to have you come check it out after Toastmasters. All right. Well, thank you, brother Parat. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There it is. I love it. You know, that, that's like my favorite. Yeah, that's, and so uh, thank you so much. So uh, next up, uh, we have, you know, one of the people that when I started this, um, I think reached out to me immediately, was very excited. I, I've, I forgot how we got connected, but for me, he's also not only an uh, e-board member, he's also our club mentor, meaning he's been really instrumental in getting us off the ground. And so without further ado, I'd like to b b uh, bring to the stage uh, brother Shane Gilmore. Woo! What's up? Welcome, welcome. Well, I know, uh, Brother Gilmore, you have, um, you were already an established Toastmaster. You know, I think we didn't say that Brother Peralta joined as a charter member, but let's start from day one. When did you actually join Toastmasters, Toastmasters uh, originally, and then get connected, obviously, to Alpha Toastmasters? I initially joined Toastmasters back in 2018. Let me start in introducing myself as well. I am Brother Shane Gilmore. I am a spring 1989 initiate of New Chapter at Lincoln University. I currently live in, live in Dallas, and I'm a member of Zai Tai Lambda, which is the North Dallas Alphas uh, down in Dallas, Texas. Uh, as Again, as I said, I got introduced to Toastmasters in 2018. And, you know, Brother Phil, I always wanted to be a Toastmaster. I should have got, I had opportunities to get involved way before 2018, but for some reason it just sparked, start, sparked my interest and I said, I'm going to jump in and I joined a local club down here, which led to me joining a club on my job, mm -hmm. which led to me joining, uh, being connected to the network. So that's when I initially got started with Toastmasters. And then uh, yeah, I, I know uh, Brother Graham will have a follow up question, but my follow up question is like, I can't remember how we got how we got connected. Was it like you saw me on the, the Facebook? Because I remember you were one of the earliest people to reach out and say, let's do this, Brother Wilkerson, and really help me, you know, corral other people, um, you know, get the paperwork in. I just don't remember how. We yeah, so I, I can explain that. So my line brother is, direct, is the director of communications for the fraternity. And he knew that I was always in the Toastmasters and that I was big in it. And, I, and I, I stand by the organization probably as close to as Alpha. And when he, I think you reached out to him at the same, or at a time to say, hey, this is what I'm interested in doing. And I had been talking to him about that previously because personally being in the fraternity for over 30 years, and being a Toastmasters for about five or six, there is, I'm going to go out on a limb and tell you that I don't think there's an organization out there that closely aligns Alpha as does Toastmasters. Yeah. And so he he communicate, and, and I don't know, Brother Graham, you, you're, you're acknowledging that. I don't know why that's not seen. And I wish that we had more of an effort at the national office to create this collaboration or national partnership with Toastmasters, because as leaders, we are responsible for effectively delivering a quality message mm -hmm. using our words. And what I have found, and I may ruffle some feathers with I, I'll say this. What I have found uh -huh. is <laughs> what I have found is that uh, men, especially black men, often have the confidence to communicate publicly, but don't have the skill. They yeah. have the confidence, but not the skill. And with that confidence, coupled with the skill that Toastmasters can teach you, it can help your message be delivered in such a more powerful, clear way, which can mm -hmm. create more of an audience and more of an a, a impact to your audience. But that's to, to, to dial that back. That's how we got connected. Brother Wilkerson is my line brother is the director of communications. He knew that I was big in Toastmasters. You got word to him that said, this is what I'm doing. He immediately contacted me and said, hey, this is what this brother's doing. Why don't you jump up and collaborate with him? Collaborate with him? And that's how we got started. 
Yeah, I just remember. I don't even I say it, it's six months ago, but it felt like it was like yesterday. Yeah, and I, I do remember immediately uh, your your enthusiasm and support, and like we we're like, let's go, and it was a go from day yeah. one, That's and good. I really appreciate that. Um, one of the thoughts I have, and you already said that, and I, I want you to maybe expand upon it, is that alignment. That was going to be one of my questions because, huh. you know, I've been a, a member of Alpha since seventeen. Um, so I'm, you know, still relatively new, you know, uh, within Alpha, and I've only been a Toastmaster since 18. So I only had one year of Alpha experience uh, before I joined Toastmasters. But as I was navigating both spaces, I personally saw this alignment. Um, I was like, wow, they have district leader. We have district leaders, you know, just very aligned. But I want to hear your comments on what you believe is those, those alignment between the two organizations. I'll start with Alpha because that's what I've been a part of the longest. We have a critical mission of developing leaders. So you, you have to think of whether, or whether leaders born or made. Uh, and it's both. Personality styles indicate some people have more natural leadership traits. But leaders are not born. They are developed. They are made. And the one thing that facilitates leadership is what you say out of your mouth and how you out of your mouth and how you communicate your message. That is what alpha is about leadership, service and leadership. So what we say and what we do is critical. What we say and what we do is critical, which ties over to Toastmasters. Toastmasters is a leadership organization that focuses on public speaking and effectively delivering a message. Now, that not, may not exactly line up to their mission statement, but that's what it is. That's why every learning uh, uh, concept in Toastmasters involves a leadership perspective. That's why, and as, as I introduce Toastmasters to the audience, Toastmasters, the learning portion of Toastmasters is called Pathways. And your previous guest talked a lot about the membership requirements. So I'm going to talk about the learning, the learning agenda. It's called Pathways. And Pathways is broken down into 11 levels, which are like courses, 11 courses. Those courses are broken down into five projects that each have, I'm sorry, five levels that each have projects involved in them. Okay. Well, the cumul culmination the way you succeed or pass or finish each level is through a high performance leadership project that requires you to come up with an idea, develop a team, communicate a vision, lead a team, as well as deli de deliver a speech on your results. Is that not alpha? Is that not leadership? Yeah. Which is communicating a vision, developing a team, developing a, a leaders for your team, finishing the project, and then giving a speech to say, this is what we did great. That's where I think that alignment is. Okay. If that answers your question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I would say as a mentor, what advice would you have for new Toastmasters, seasoned Toastmasters, even like novice Toastmasters that may be interested not only within Alpha Toastmasters in general, that are brothers, of course, but Toastmasters in general? Excellent question. And it just so happens that I, this is on the forefront of my mind because I just finished a path in, Toast, in Toastmasters. And the last final step of finishing a path or that coursework is reflecting on your path. And one of the specific questions is, what advice would you give a new Toastmaster? Wow. Look at it that. One point. Exactly. My advice would be to whether it's a brand new Toastmaster or um, an experienced Toastmaster is learn to appreciate the journey. Mm. Learn to appreciate the journey, which is what Toastmasters is. I live by an ology that says everybody has a story and everybody wants to be heard. We just have to get in positions where we're willing to tell that story or where people are willing to listen. That's Toastmasters. I don't care what you do. 
any day of the week, there's a learning lesson that you have implemented that day that you can give a speech on. It can be how to avoid road rage. It can be the gift of gratitude. It can be loving your family or your family members. That's a speech that aligns with with the journey of Toastmasters. So my advice to a brand new Toastmaster or even a more experienced one is appreciate the journey. It's not a hard journey and it does require you to speak publicly, but appreciate it and document it and say, this is what I've learned during this journey, which is, this is what it's brought out of me. Uh, man, I think we, we could have hauled, we got some other brothers here and you can hold it. I mean, cause one, he, you love to talk, and two, you're good at it. <laughs> right. But but, but um, I, I do want to ask one question. You know, sure. um, there is this will be our last question before you. Uh, you know, you're. I like to hear some closing thoughts as well. But my last question is, when you know you've been really experienced in Alpha, and you've been somewhat experienced in Toastmasters, when did it actually click that you became a better speaker? So I w- I'll give an example for me. I had to do my father-in-law's eulogy. You know, something completely different. Um, but I practiced, I wrote it down and I prepared and I, I just did it, you know, and I had a lot of people come up to me afterwards and say, wow, I could tell you've been working on your public speaking. You really, you really did it. Um, and that's when it clicked that this was continuous practice that made me better in other areas of my life. Was there a moment like that for you? Yes, there was, but I want to give you a, Proceeding thought to that. Would you believe the reason I joined Toastmasters was to learn how to listen better? Mm. Mm -hmm. And that is because, as you can see, I don't mind talking. I didn't, I needed more skill, but the one thing I needed to do better was listen. That's why I joined Toastmasters. So, why, when did I have that aha moment? It was probably, I can't pinpoint it, but I can tell you generally where it was during my evaluations, when there were some people in the room that I trusted, that I was willing to tell my story to, that said, this is what you can do better as in your speeches, as a public speaker. And believe it or not, one of them was practice. Practice a public speech that you want to give. Know the beginning of it and know the end of it. And the, the middle part of it really relax and settle into that to what you want to tell what you want to say so it was through listening that i realized this is when i've become a better speaker by listening to what people i trusted say what did i who i trusted to give me an evaluation listening to their input in my life and accepting what they say as wow that's pinpoint i may not like it at the time i may not think it's even true but their objective listeners they heard it and I and I did it. And so I had to listen to what they say. And over that, over that, over this period of time of my Toastmasters journey, I realized, man, every time I listen to an evaluation, I can incorporate that. And it makes me a better speaker when I open my mouth. Excellent. Well, I think any closing parting words, ways that we can people that can connect and follow up with you. And then we'll have our next guest uh, show up for the. Yes. For the my closing words are. Jump in. Don't be scared. Join the Toastmasters. Appreciate the journey. It is the cheapest leadership experience you will ever have. It's $60 for every six months, $120 a year. And follow Alpha Toastmasters 19 on 6 on social media. And if you can't find what you want there, go to Toastmasters.org, Toastmasters.org, and dig around and you will find what you want there about the Toastmasters organization. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you, brother. Thank brother you, Joe thank Moore. you. Thank you, and uh, we'll have Ooh. our next guest. Thank you so Ooh, much. Six. Oh, six. All right, so uh, this is very interesting. This is another charter member, um, and very interesting, because he was one of the few brothers in my chapter, my actual chapter, Theta Rolanda, that jumped on board immediately. And so I'm really happy to have him uh, on this conversation tonight. Uh, let's bring to the stage uh, Brother Mark Peters. Welcome, welcome, Ooh. welcome. All right, all right. Brother Wilkerson, Brother Graham, good to be with you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Peters. I am a Theta Rho Lambda initiate uh, fall 2016. Theta Rho Lambda chapter is Arlington County and Alexandria City in the Commonwealth of Virginia. 
I love it. So, you know, I mean, I think you saw the spamming in my own chapter. You know, I had to spam <laughs> and I was sending the link and saying, we're going to do this in my own chapter. What what made you, you know, one of the first brothers, you actually a charter member of our organization, our, our club here to jump on board and, and practice? Well, people may not know this, but my first brush with Toastmasters was years, actually decades ago, back in 2001, when I audited the Talk of the Tower Toastmasters out of the Tribune Tower, out of Tribune Company, in, back when I was working at Tribune in Chicago, mm. many years ago for a little uh, dot com property called blackvoices.com. And I didn't join the club at that time, but I was familiar with the organization and how it works. So when the opportunity to join Toastmasters, but not just any Toastmasters, Alpha Toastmasters 1906, I felt that it was a moment that I could not pass up where I am, I hear one particular guest mentioned that you get to network with Toastmasters from all over the country or brothers from all over the country. But remember, Alpha is a global organization. The general mm -hmm. president is an international president. And I long for the day when one of my Alpha brothers will actually be uh, a fellow Toastmaster of mine from, let's say, Rho Phi Lambda chapter, which is in the same country where my father was born. And I also understand we've had some pretty uh, prominent uh, brothers on as guests in, in previous meetings. Uh, and, and also, Brother Phil, you had a question in, in one of our other chats about networking with a particular brother. And uh, DM me on that. I, I have an answer for your question. Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's funny. You know, I'm trying to get uh, and you, you're referencing we had we had Brother Daryl, uh, past general president. Uh, brother Daryl Matthews on impact, and we have past general president uh, brother Mark Tillman coming up next in October. Mm -hmm. So we are really excited um, that even brothers that have been general presidents are going to share their journey about the importance of public speaking. And they're, you know, maybe we'll get one of them to be a member and who knows, but right? we still no. come we're going to speak into existence. Come, come talk to our club. But yeah, brother Graham, you have a question for, for brother Peters. I would say I, I noticed you mentioned a lot of the networking aspect. What would your philosophy or not even your philosophy, what would your perspective be for people who are interested in being in Toastmasters in terms of the networking aspect, how it could help them, um, what they should do in order to like get to the next level? Well, I'd say that it should be more natural. It should be something that happens serendipitously that as one progresses through their levels in Toastmaster, through their uh, various paths or their respective paths, or as they progress through levels in Alpha, mm -hmm. they will get noticed. All their good work in Alpha, all their good work in Toastmasters will get noticed. And eventually, that's going to lead to something where they might actually be in a leadership position. I've already been in a couple of leadership positions in my chapter as a chapter vice president, for example, but also leadership positions in Alpha Toastmasters 1906, where people will be actually coming to you for advice. And it might be someone who is junior in Toastmasters, but very senior, for example, in Alpha, and that's an opportunity to network and take it from there. And, and to speak to the value of Alpha Toastmasters 1906, one thing that hasn't been said that I think is important is to look back to the history of the fraternity. We started as a literary society. Oh, okay. Why should we as literary men not have a facility with speaking, whether it's prepared speeches or speaking extemporaneously. It's the, sort of, it's the sort of thing that we should be very practiced in doing. And as we lead in other fields of endeavor, in other areas and other venues, 
we should be leading in public speaking as well, which is yet another reason for as many brothers as possible to join Alpha Toastmasters 1906. Uh, one thing I've really been admired about you is that you jumped in with both feet. And, <laughs> I mean, seriously, and given speeches and, and really progressed, and you actually competed, which I always give kudos, you know, like man in the arena, um, someone that doesn't who airs. Yeah. But you know, he airs and is bloody and marred. And I don't know, I don't know it word for word, but you know what I'm saying? Like you threw yourself in there. Tell us a little bit about doing that. Like tell us a little bit about as a new member, your experiences of putting yourself out there, whether it's a contest and all that. Speak to the new members. Um, we had Brother Gilmore who talked about he's a more seasoned toastmaster, but speak to the newer members. What what has encouraged you to really jump in with both feet? I just do that. It, again, going back to Alpha for a, a second, I was chapter man of the year. And soon thereafter, I competed at the district level in Vacapath. That's statewide across the entire state. I did not win, but I competed. My yes. head was bloodied, but unbowed. So here I am again competing uh, for uh, district wide Toastmasters. Comedic, uh, comedic speech competition. And I think I did pretty well. I uh, was under time and I, I, I think I hit some notes even though you can't exactly hear the, the laugh track or anything like that. But I did not succeed in winning the prize and moving on to the next level. But that doesn't stop me from trying again. And you are so, going to try again because I'm going to put you yeah. to the Because yeah. uh, you're going to no, do it. So. You're going to do it. I'm going to put ahead. you to the fire. Yeah. yeah. Bring it. Send them all. I'm ready. Brother Graham, you have a question? I would say now that you did the competition, what next? What next is I have to continue along my pathway and do more speeches. And as I had said to Brother Wilkerson earlier, I need to polish up my $10 words. I always feel like I have a modicum of facility with speaking extemporaneously in these table talks, but I always want to polish that up and make sure that I don't stumble or guffaw. I, I've signed up for a lot of grammarian posts for subsequent meetings, so I'm doing that and having a good old time introducing people to words that will uh, shock and amaze. Yeah, you but, use some words tonight. <laughs> yeah. I, beat words. I, I beat the words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Toastmasters is a great opportunity to uh, get those words in and not feel like you just jaw jacket. You know? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, I guess you're right. You're going to, you know, parting words, you know, share a little bit your thoughts and we'll have our last guest. Uh, Brother Brown on share a little bit of his thoughts, but any parting words you'd like to share with those that are you know watching or going to watch this later because this is still going to be live for those. Don't worry, we won't miss it. Three things: one, it's going to be on uh, Facebook again, YouTube, as well as LinkedIn. So this is still going to be existing, so those can watch it later. As well as I will take the audio and have it on my podcast, Positive Filter, for those that are audio listeners. So this will still be a conversation you can check out later. So don't worry if you missed it. Uh, you'll get the, get all the jewels, as they say, uh, from this conversation. But, um, you know, Brother Peter, is there anything you'd like to share? I can't wait till you get on Netflix, man. I can't wait till you get your Ooh. OTT app up. So we could be all, we could be worldwide. Anyways. That's manifested. Parting, <laughs> manifested, yeah. That's why I'm talking it into existence. Parting words, I would just say that to reiterate, we are literary men. We are part of an organization that leads and develops leaders, and this can be an integral part of that leadership development education that we all need as alphas. I love it. I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Brother Peters. Thank as you. I said earlier, you know, just everyone, I mean, I'll be Brother Graham, you know, starting this journey, you know, we, besides needing a certain group of numbers of members to start, it's always just really encouraging to see people really excited about something new 
and to know you're not doing something new alone. And so mm -hmm. knowing that you were one of my Theta Roller Lambda chapter brothers and that you were on board uh, made me want to really do this venture of Alpha Toastmaster. So thank you so much. No problem. 06, brother. 06. 06. All right. So we're going to bring on our last guest. Uh, our last guest is uh, at an Eagles. The Eagles playing tonight? He said he's at a game, but we'll see. We're going to bring on Brother Brown. Brother Brown. Good evening, brothers. Uh, it was actually a Phillies game. We just uh, finished spanking the Braves. Uh, so I'm on my way back to the house right now. So I'm in the car as we're doing this. So I'll, I'll be off camera, but uh, I'll go ahead and quickly introduce myself. Uh, so good evening again, brothers. Uh, Brother Ryan Brown here. I'm a spring 2010 initiate of the Gamma Nu chapter of Alpha Bio Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, I've been an active member of the organization for the last 13 years um, and have just, you know, a, a number of experiences traveling uh, globally and, and interacting with Alpha on an international level. Um, so it's just been a good time um, and very happy to join Toastmasters. Uh, like, like Phil mentioned earlier, uh, being a charter member of, of Toastmasters is, is definitely, you know, a, a proud moment for so uh, I'll turn it back over to the rest of the brothers. Yeah, so Brother Brown, you know, one of my questions for you is, I forgot, how did we get, was it through, I think it was through Brother Graham, we talked about this earlier, like when you saw this, uh, what was some of your first instincts to say, yeah, let me let me join this, you know, I, I know some of the, I know some of the story and journey of brothers I know, but I'm always curious to know, like, when you saw this from afar, what, what made you want to join Toastmasters? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I have always found myself in positions where I've had to do public speaking. Um, and uh, while f from for, for some people, they say that this is uh, something that comes easy for me, right? Where they, they look at, you know, the speeches that I give and all that stuff. And they're like, oh, man, you, you hit a chord with what you were saying. Uh, for me, I, I find myself to be hypercritical of my speaking, um, and uh, I just wanted to get better at it, right? So I, I, when, I, when I had the opportunity to join Toastmasters, I, I thought to myself, you know, this is, this is definitely it. And, you know, some life events helped, you know, propel me to just take the leap, right, and, and do this. Uh, so um, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's why I decided to, to pursue this and and, 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 and truly commit to, to doing Toastmasters at this point in my life, I find myself in more situations where I have to, you know, do public speaking. Um, and I, I want to make sure that I'm comfortable delivering those speeches um, and, and doing this in, in a way that that makes sense um, for, for me and my career and, and the things that I'm associated with. Excellent. Okay. Um, Brother Brown, you said you actually are a really good speaker. So I would say from before Toastmasters till now, how do you feel your speaking skills have changed? My speaking skills, how have they changed uh, from before Toastmasters to now? So I, I'd say that I, I'm much more comfortable delivering my speeches. Um, my, my cadence feels more natural uh, to me as opposed to sort of trying to follow someone else's cadence. So just being able to practice these speeches uh, more than I have in the past, it allows me to to really create, you know, my own personal cadence and follow my own tone. And so it, it just kind of builds that comfort um, with speaking in front of small or large crowds. Now, let's say this right now. Um, I'm on the fence. Uh, this is probably be my last question, so that you know, I want to make sure you're driving safe, safety first. I'm on the fence. Oh, uh, I'm on the fence. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm an alpha, um, alpha man. We're very proud. I don't need this. You know, you know, this is 
uh, which I've gotten, I ain't gonna lie. I've, I've actually, when I was throwing this in the random alpha groups, when I was trying to start it off, people were like, Brother Wilkerson, like they were almost like insulted that I was saying that they needed to work on public speaking. Um, <laughs> so so with that being said, what would you say to, to a, a, a resistant brother of alpha, why this could be a benefit for you? Absolutely. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to start off by, by saying this, and, I, and, I, and I, I will be throwing a little bit of shade, so I hope everybody's ready. I've been to the conventions. I've been on that convention floor, and believe me, some of these brothers do need that time to practice their speeches. Okay. Um, Alpha Toastmasters teaches you a couple of things. It's not just about, um, oh, I, I'm a good orator. Right. And, and that's all I need to do. It also teaches you how to, to get your point across and be brief. Um, mm -hmm. And a number of brothers could benefit from from learning a little bit about brevity. Um, but beyond that, it's it's so much like I said, it's so much more than just learning how to orate. Right. You had this this organization kind of helps you refine uh, your your own path when it comes to speaking, right? Every single person has their own sort of thing that they have to do, whether it is work-related, whether it is just alpha, whether this is something that you do outside of your normal nine-to-five. Speaking is something that we can all always get better at, right? Um, when, when we think about being alphas, we, we, we think about the fact that we are leaders, right? And, and leaders never stop learning. And that's, that's one of the things that continue to, to help us um, be, be leaders, right? Constant learning. And so when I think of Alpha Toastmasters, this is just, this is, this is simply a, a, another course for me to take to, to continue to practice and refine my skills. Excellent. Well, our big brother mentor, brother Gilmore said, if he hears um one more time from either of us on this call and this thing right now, he's going to come get me. So I'm really working hard yeah. and pausing and trying not to use those filler words. He's probably going to watch this later. I'm also going to text him that I said that because I did not realize how often I said um and ah, especially now, even on my podcast, I'm still working on it. So, Brother Gilmore, Absolutely. I am slowing myself down to not say um and ah. And, and that's why joining Toastmasters is important because like, like you, Phil, I find myself using a significant amount of filler words, whether it is a casual conversation or giving an actual speech, and I want to get better at removing those filler words so that the point that I'm trying to make is not lost in a, bunch, in, a in a sea of likes or ums or me stuttering over my words. Yeah, I think I do a lot of ums and ahs and I'm really working on it right now because I speak, my, my brain is processing words faster than it comes out. So I need to slow down. So as you can see right now, I'm really focusing on slowing down. And so that's going to be something I'm actually going to work on. Thank you, Brother Gilmore. I'm going to work on that in my public speaking, especially on the Zoom or especially during my show right now. I think he probably even put it in the comments that he's going to come get me. <laughs> I thought filler words weren't bad. We never heard Barack Obama up for days. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Funny comment. So, Brother Brown, any parting words uh, that you'd like to share uh, with the listeners? And then me and uh, Normie want to chop it up, maybe have some dialogue for a couple minutes, and then we'll land the plane. But any parting words that you'd like to share? Uh, yeah, fi final words uh, to, to all those out there that are sort of on the fence and, or just – questioning whether Toastmasters is for them in any way, shape, or form. Think, think of this as an investment in yourself, right? If you want to you want to get better at anything in life, it requires practice. Uh, and it, it requires an investment in yourself. So I, I implore you all to, to spend that time and invest in yourself, not only to make yourself a better speaker, but just to, as Brother Gilmore mentioned, to make yourself a better listener as well. 
Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Brother Brown. Thank you thank so much you. for being on board. Absolutely. And thank you for, you know, being uh, a core member and really jumping in as well. Similar to Brother Peters, you have been a new member that has jumped in with both feet and really put some time into it. And I really appreciate that. Absolutely. I appreciate that. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to do this uh, with a prestigious group of gentlemen, such as our, our brothers of Alpha here. So thank Excellent. You. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So, Brother Graham, that was a great conversation. You know, what was some right. of your, what, what is some of your, you know, takeaways, the things that you, you thought were very, you know, inspiring of that conversation from all the brothers that we had today? I think what was inspiring was definitely the filler words. I will say that. Shout out to Brother Gilmore. I'm sure there were quite a few filler words here. So I think that was definitely important because you notice in your conversations after you have like a few Toastmaster meetings that I actually say this a lot and I actually probably shouldn't. Another thing I would say that stood out was people thinking that they don't need it. And I think with just not alphas, but just humans in general, like we never can stop improving ourselves. So people thinking, oh, I'm a good speaker already. I don't need like someone to proofread or I don't need to convey my messages to other people is something that we need to fix and change because there's not going to be a time where you're going to be the best at every last thing. There's going to be a day where it may just not be your day. So I think those two things stood out. Um, what about you? And see, I just said, um, just now. So two th see, two that things. Was first, I think that was my first, um. The so two, th far, two things that stood out for me, I think two things, Brother Peralta, what he shared about his journey to doing Toastmasters and how it's really already starting to show effects in his public speaking as he had a, a few public speaking engagements today. Another thing that stood out uh, was what Brother Gilmore said about the alignment of building leaders that both these organizations I've seen in my own journey, my younger journey, right? I have a lot of pro fights. I think almost everyone here uh, are pro fights to me within Alpha. Uh, and I've been able to watch other leaders in Alpha. And now I've been able to watch other leaders in Toastmasters and improve my leadership through this organization. So I do see the alignment of leadership in both organizations and I've been able to benefit from that. I've never been a president of anything before. How y'all let me be the president of Alpha Toastmasters, I don't know. I think it's because I chartered it. If we had to vote, maybe. You I would came get down, voted. You came down with it. You came down with it. I, I wouldn't get voted on this, but I, I have it now. And it's really been an opportunity for me as the president of a club full of alphas to really try to be a better leader. And it's, it is quite intimidating because I've seen leaders and presidents of other club, not clubs, but real chapters of Alpha. So to be able mm. to do this, uh, to do this with Alpha Toastmasters has been really something that stretched me and has made me really work at being a better leader. And I think I've seen that transference of being a better leader uh, in organizations like Alpha and Toastmasters to my normal day job. I felt I'm more of a leader uh, on my campus of George Mason. So I'm really working on that. I probably mm -hmm. said one or two ums. Shane's going to get me. So we have a few things here. We have a few, like one or two brothers join us live. We'll see other brothers join us uh, later uh, as they watch this later. So what would be one key? Like, let's, we we're both going to share a lesson. What okay. is the lesson that you want to share with new less, uh, new listeners? And then I'll share one lesson, and then I'll close this out with a little bit of a wrap-up about okay. Alpha Toastmasters and where people can follow up and learn about us. Okay. One lesson I would say is stretch. Stretch because you never know where the opportunities lead you. With Alpha, for example, you have to stretch in order to you know become a member. And if you are in different various positions within the organization, you have to stretch there as well. Toastmasters is honestly just another stretch. It's another circle of life. I would say definitely join. I know even though I'm a leader, because we all should be leaders, uh, I would say that there's times where I'm like, uh, I don't know if I want to sign up for this, but just stretch, stretch, figure it out. 
brothers are there to figure it out with you. So it's not a matter of like you're gonna be in a position for like one day and you're on your own. And I would say another part, just be able to receive feedback. Be able to receive feedback because it improves your speaking, it improves your presentation, it just improves you as a whole. So I would say just definitely be able to receive feedback because this is all about feedback to making us better speakers and better men. I think one of the things I would say align with the stretch is don't do it half-assed. Okay. So what I mean by that is, you know, we say this too, like if you're an alpha, don't just be a, a letter wearer, right? Like you don't just join alpha and then just wear letters. You actually get involved. Well, I don't know what the equivalent of wearing letters in Toastmasters is, but don't become a member and don't get the full benefit. Put it on I your resume. Really, yeah, like a resume or whatever we can call it. But like Resume builder. Resume builder. Maybe the resume builder. I don't know. No one really. I guess so. I think that is it. But the key point is, if you're going to pay $60 for every six months, get the bang for your buck. Give speeches. Compete in contests. Take on roles. Take on roles as a grammarian or timer. Don't just come to every single meeting and only be participating in table topics. Get your money's worth. It is not worth, I believe, Toastmasters is only worth what you put in. And not just Alpha Toastmasters, but any member of Toastmasters. I've seen so many members join in my other clubs that are paying for this membership. Uh, come, they come to almost every meeting, but don't take any roles or don't do any speeches and don't complete any paths. And I'm not saying you have to be competitive and only do speeches to complete paths, but I just feel bad. Like they're not getting their, their money's worth. Now for what I've heard, some people say for them, it's just good to be in a space and they listen a lot and it's good to hear other public speakers, but you got to also practice too. And you got to get in there just as much as the people you're listening to. So I would say my main thing is if you're going to pay the money, get your money's worth and, and, Put yourself out there. Jump with both feet. We've had, like I said, we have two newer Toastmasters earlier in our conversation. Actually, three because Brother Peralta is new to Toastmasters as well. But they weren't sideliners. They jump in. They give speeches. They get involved. And so I want to encourage all those that are watching us later to, you know, look for a club. But if you're going to join a club, really, really put yourself out there. Speak at every meeting. Get a, take a role in every meeting. What you know, whether it's a time or grammarian, but just have a role in every meeting and get involved so that you feel like you're contributing and you're learning and growing. So, so brother Graham, I'm going to pop off real quick. I'm going to share one more graphic and then I'm going to share for those that are listening. So thank you so much for being my co-host for this alpha Toastmasters webinar. Uh, so Oh six. Oh six. All right, everybody. So we really had a great meeting today or webinar. If you're watching this later, please continue to follow up or follow all the channels of Alpha Toastmasters. We are found on Facebook. We're Alpha Toastmasters 1906. Uh, that's Alpha Toastmasters 1906 on every platform, which is tw not Twitter. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. We have a Facebook page and we have an Instagram page for all those things. If you're just interested in Toastmasters in general, just go to Toastmasters.org. Uh, you can look up chapters in your local area by going to Chapter Locator. Um, if you have any questions as it relates, and I did say, um, if you have any questions as it relates to Toastmasters, feel free to reach out to me, uh, Philip Wilkerson on LinkedIn or Facebook or any of the platforms like that. If you're a member of Alpha, you know, a, or a member of Alpha in back a path or in Virginia or in my chapter, you know where to find me to learn more, but I'm happy, happy, happy uh, to have this as a program. Brothers of Alpha, a special announcement on October 24th, we will be hosting a guest speaker, which is past general president, Mark Tillman. We're really excited. He will be joining our Alpha Toastmasters meeting on October 24th at 7.06 p.m., if you want the details, we have some of the details on our Facebook page and Instagram. You can also DM us for the link to that. We host all our meetings on Zoom on the second and fourth 
Tuesday of the month at 7.06 p.m. Uh, virtually so that we can have brothers from all over the country. So if you have any questions about Alpha Toastmasters, please contact me. All the information will be in the comments of this video, as well as those that are listening to this later on Apple or Spotify. I'll put the information to Alpha Toastmasters in the show notes. So thank you so much for joining, listening, part participating, and have a good night. Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career, with a little self-help along the way. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends and like the Facebook page, Spreading Positivity of Movement. Thanks for listening.